hello everyone welcome to the economics classes in the last meeting we had discussed about uh, the value added method and its formula uh, a couple of things were left uh, about the value added method in this meeting we are going to discuss uh, precautions regarding value added method followed by a problem of uh, double counting and the ways to avoid it and what are those ways through which we can avoid the problem of double counting you can see here that uh, there are two methods final output method and value added method so what the formula you studied that was a value added method the formula was a value of uh, output minus uh, value of intermediate goods and services through this formula we derive gdp at mp or gva at mp here gdp at mp stands for gross domestic product at market price whereas uh, gva at mp that's a synonym to the gdp at mp that is gross value added at market price since uh, we are studying the value added uh, method we also call gdp gva at mp so now let us uh, go back and uh, talk about the precautions which are quite important while studying value added method uh, while using this method to compute national income uh, number one uh, precaution is that uh, value of the sale and purchase of second hand goods is not included in the national income here let me repeat that uh, value of the sale and purchase of second hand goods is not included in the estimation of national income uh, the reason is that uh, when these goods and services uh, were uh, produced for the first time or uh, in the concerned year whenever they were produced the value of these goods and services were already added in the estimation of national income uh, let's suppose that uh, mr x purchases a second hand car in 2020-21 now here the this car let us suppose that uh, it was uh, first purchased by its uh, first owner in uh, 2015-16 now the value of this car was added in the economy in 2015 and 16 so this good was introduced in 1516 its value was already added now you could have uh, one argument here that uh, when the mr x uh, he is purchasing uh, the second hand car in this uh, financial year he is definitely paying uh, whatever the depreciated value of the car is but he definitely he is uh, here making an economic transaction but we cannot uh, add uh, the value of a uh, second hand car in our estimation the reason is that no new car is uh, produced in this financial year as far as this second hand uh, second hand car is concerned uh, naturally there would be a production of uh, new cars in the financial year 2021 but as far as our example is concerned this second hand car was already produced in uh, the financial year 1516 and we cannot add this car because it is not produced in the financial year 2021 so i think that the first precaution is quite clear that uh, we are not going to include the value of the sales of second hand or purchase of uh, second hand goods and services our uh, second precaution says that uh, commission uh, this second precaution is also connected with the previous one commission earned on account of the sale and purchase of second hand goods is included now what does it mean that uh, the suppose the, there are agents in the market there are brokers who are uh, engaged in the economic activities in the business of uh, purchasing and selling the second hand cars we had said in our first precaution that we are not going to add the value of second hand goods and services in the estimation of national income but the person who is engaged in the business of selling buying and selling of uh, second hand cars he is earning commission on that let us say that uh, uh, mr y who is engaged in the profession or business of uh, buying and selling of second hand cars mr y here uh, he will charge definitely his commission suppose he charges three percent on uh, the value of a car worth rupees uh, five lakh so here fifteen thousand rupees is uh, simply his commission which he has added in the economy through rendering his services for the first time for that particular car so every time when mr y sells any second hand car in the market then whatever the commission he is earning that commission is earned 
in form of uh, factor income by Mr. Y and uh, that is earned for the first time and definitely that's generation of income and we have to add it in the estimation of national income. Now we come to the third precaution that says that uh, own account production of goods of the producing units is taken into account. We add it in our estimation of national income. What is own account production of goods of the producing units? Of the producing units means uh, here producer sector and own account production of goods means uh, sometimes you must have seen that uh, there are showrooms, there are uh, shops, uh, there are malls where the producer sector uses a couple of, uh, in fact uh, many electronic appliances uh, or many other goods and services for its office use or for the uh, use of uh, its employees or the staff. So suppose uh, if uh, any showroom has uh, installed any air conditioner that is going to be a final good and uh, whenever uh, such a good is uh, used by that particular uh, uh, what you say that uh, shopkeeper then the value of that air conditioner has to be added in the estimation of national income here let us say that uh, this shop is engaged in the business of buying and selling air conditioners only in the same way there is one more example given in uh, this precaution that uh, suppose there is a car manufacturer or uh, there is any outlet uh, there is any showroom where uh, cars are sold so any person who has uh, purchased one car for the uh, convenience of uh, its employees then that car which is used by the employer or the entrepreneur for the convenience of uh, his employees then the value of that car will also be added in the estimation of national income here let me be very clear that uh, this car whenever it is uh, produced for the first time in that concern here only it will be taken into the estimation of national income further we go with the the fourth precaution here and that says that uh, imputed value of uh, production for self-consumption is taken into account what does it mean here you know that uh, there are uh, farmers and generally whatever uh, because nowadays uh, through the modern farming methods and the multiple cropping methods the farmers are able to produce beyond their subsistence level and uh, due to which they sell a part of the total yield into the market and uh, some part is kept uh, for their own consumption here whatever the producing units please note it here whatever the producing units we are not talking about the households here because uh, there is one more precaution in this series and uh, that will definitely cre may create a confusion before you so here please note that whatever the production is done by the producing units for self-consumption like farmers they keep a part of the total yield total output uh, for their own use suppose a farmer has produced uh, 100 uh, quintals of rice and he keeps uh, around a half quintal of uh, rice for his self-consumption for entire year then definitely that uh, uh, part which is he has kept for his uh, family's consumption is going to be added in the estimation of national income so please note whenever the producers they keep any part of uh, the total output for the self-consumption that has to be added in the estimation of national income now we go to the next precaution and uh, that is that value of intermediate goods is not to be added or is not included in the national income so it was already clear that uh, the value of uh, intermediate goods uh, are uh, added in the estimation of, estimation of uh, national income and to avoid the double counting we need to reduce it uh, from the final uh, value of final goods here see that the formula of GDP at MP or uh, gross value added at uh, market price GVA at MP is equal to value of uh, output minus uh, value of intermediate goods so here value of intermediate goods we already uh, decrease we already deducted from the value of output 
so to avoid that uh, the commodities value should not be repeated they should not be accounted twice thrice or more than it so to avoid the double counting of uh, any commodity uh, or the value of that commodity we have to keep the value of intermediate goods out of the box then we come to the next precaution that is uh, imputed rent on the owner occupied house to be taken into account uh, this precaution is a little dramatic and uh, if you relate it with your uh, practical life you must have seen that uh, many a times people they rent their assets uh, to the other people and uh, through which they generate the rental income whatever the income is earned that is going to be a part of uh, the national income but the question is what happens when you are residing in your own house and are you willing to pay rent to yourself but uh, economics says economic principles say that uh, uh, this value the imputed rent on the owner occupied house the owner who has occupied his own house he has to pay rent to himself because house is uh, generating services for you and you are liable to pay uh, some sort of rent as uh, and uh, here this rent will be calculated at the market price whatever the prevailing uh, rent rate is going on in the market uh, that rent you have to pay to your house in fact you are the owner of uh, this house and you will pay to yourself so it seems a little dramatic but practically the value of uh, such a rent uh, nobody pays and it is not possible to take into the estimation of national income practically but theoretically we have to add the value of imputed rent on the owner occupied house in the estimation of national income so whenever you are given this item particularly this item in the question in the numericals make sure that you are adding it now further the last precaution says that the services for self consumption are not considered while estimating value added services for self consumption uh, you must uh, see here again that uh, there was one precaution that uh, production for the self consumption by the producing units i believe it was the fourth precaution and it was mentioned there that uh, production by the producing units for their self consumption as we talked about the air conditioner by the ac showroom that if the ac showroom is uh, using uh, one ac for its uh, own use for the office use that has to be added in the value of uh, estimation of national income now here what happens when any household the, the thing is different that uh, whenever any household he or she tries to produce something for himself then that value is not going to be added in the estimate of national income because there is no accounting possible for that uh, moreover that these transactions are uh, left unrecorded nobody uh, accounts them and uh, we cannot add uh, such transactions in the estimation of national income for example services of your mother she never accounts it and uh, nobody is going to pay for that since uh, she is not doing for the commercial purpose and uh, we are not adding her services in the estimation of national income now our next topic comes and that says that uh, the problem of double counting and the ways to avoid it how do we uh, avoid the problem of uh, double counting uh, the example was already given to you and uh, there is a very basic thing there are uh, two methods that is a final output method and the value added method first we will discuss the problem and uh, then we will see that uh, how do these two methods they solve this problem of double counting so the problem of double counting says suppose mr uh, x sells wheat to mr y mr y sells after uh, processing the wheat into flour mr y sells it to mr c or mr j then mr j who is a retailer suppose and uh, he is selling further uh, to the final consumer so whatever the price at which the mr z is selling that floor packet to the ultimate consumer that price includes the value added by mr x and mr y also now if we add the value of uh, 
value added by Mr. X separately and Mr. Y separately. If we add the complete value of uh, both of the X and Y, then it will relate to the problem of double counting. Uh, this was a very fine example and uh, we will see the example listed in uh, our textbook. It says that suppose a farmer produces one ton of wheat and sells it for rupees 400 in the market to a flour mill. Now the thing is a farmer has produced one ton of wheat and he has, sell, he has sold <coughs> this wheat to a flour mill at rupees 400. So that means whatever the uh, sum of money the farmer is getting that is rupees 400. Uh, from his point of view he has added the value of rupees 400. So the value of rupees 400 is added in the economy. Now next is the flour mill has purchased at rupees 400 and uh, after all the process by converting the flour into or sorry converting wheat into flour it is selling at rupees 600 to a baker that means the overall value what uh, the flour mill has added in the economy that is rupees 600 so if you add the uh, previous value and the, the present one then that makes rupees 1000 for rupees 400 plus rupees 600 that is rupees 1000 now third point says but the baker uses it as an intermediate good and manufactures the bread the baker sells the bread to the shopkeeper for rupees 800 and for the baker the bread is a final good so here but for the shopkeeper again it is an intermediate good because the shopkeeper will also add his margin let us uh, treat that uh, in the point four the shopkeeper is a retailer and uh, it will sell this bread to the ultimate consumer so the example is quite similar here and uh, we are just seeing this example numerically so if you add uh, the rupees 400 added by farmer then rupees 600 added by the flour mill rupees 800 added by the uh, big bakery owner and at the end uh, the shopkeeper is also selling this uh, to the final consumer at rupees 900 so 400 600 thousand thousand plus 800 1800 and 1800 and uh, 900 that is 2700 so that 2700 uh, as given here is the total value added in the economy if we treat uh, our estimation of national income in this way then we are actually leading to the problem of double counting because the value of value added by the farmer value added by the flour mill value added by the bakery owner and value added by the shopkeeper is calculated separately through the formula of value of output minus value of intermediate goods and services so we need to avoid the double counting because uh, now we will see that uh, the total value added in the economy was not 2700 in fact it was rupees 900 only so there's a huge difference between uh, rupees 900 and 2700 now how did we come to rupees 900 let us see that uh, the final one the retailer he had uh, sold the bread to the ultimate consumer at rupees 900 so the cost of purchasing the bread from the bakery owner is already added in the value of bread so at rupees 900 it is sold into the market the cost or value added by the farmer value added by the uh, flour mill value added by the baker is already added in fact the margin of the retailer is also added that margin is the value addition by that shop uh, retailer so overall the value is only rupees 900 not rupees 2700 uh, in this method, uh, in the first method, sorry, final output method, we take directly the value of a final output. As uh, in this example, we have taken directly the value of a final output that is rupees 900. Final output means when a commodity uh, shifts or it uh, goes from one process to the other process, from second process to the third process. So through the different process, when a commodity uh, moves and when it reaches to the uh, in, in the hands of a ultimate consumer then 
at that point we take the value of that commodity at the final point directly here as in the above equation above solution we saw that uh, gdp is rupees 900 that means we pick the final value of the output that was rupees 900 this is the one way of doing it so it is the final output method second is value added method which will going to be more prevalent in as per our syllabus is concerned in value added method we use a basic equation that is a, a value of output minus value of intermediate goods and services uh, i will revise the bifurcation of uh, this uh, formula here you can see that uh, in the previous meeting also we write it gdp at mp or gva at mp because whatever you are going to derive from this equation that is going to be your gdp at mp or gva at mp that means gross domestic product at market price and gross value added at market price so here value of output minus monetary value of here we are taking the monetary value of course we are not taking the number of units uh, value of intermediate goods and services so here if uh, you could have uh, used uh, this formula which is our value added method then you would uh, take the value of output that was uh, sales plus inventory investment or you may also call it change in stock so we will see the solutions uh, further <clears throat> while using this formula but for the above equation of the above uh, example you could see that uh, the value of output was uh, rupees 2700 and uh, the value of intermediate that uh, let us suppose that uh, the farmer has not occurred any expenditure on uh, the purchase of any intermediate goods and uh, directly we will assume it zero there was no purchase intermediate purchase by him and uh, rupees 400 is what the value added by that farmer hence we are not uh, taking any intermediate cost occurred by the farmer plus as uh, you could see in your uh, example that uh, at rupees uh, 600 the farmers uh, sorry the flour mill who converted wheat into flour it uh, sold it in the market at rupees 600 uh, since flour mill purchased it uh, purchased the wheat at rupees 400 400 we can assume here the cost of intermediate good for him or the purchase of intermediate good that was wheat next is that uh, now the flour mill sells it to the baker and baker baker purchased it at 600 and sold it at 800 so 600 is the value of intermediate goods whatever he is selling that is irrelevant in this formula right now plus now at the end the shopkeeper he purchased uh, the bread from a baker at rupees 800 so at 800 let us assume that uh, uh, sorry there is no assumption and it's a fact in this numerical that uh, at rupees 800 the shopkeeper purchased and rupees 900 he is selling so simply 800 would be the intermediate uh, cost of the shopkeeper so zero is the value what uh, the farmer has occurred of the intermediate purchase intermediate purchase means whatever you purchase uh, for the uh, further production here we will assume that uh, rupees 400 whatever the value the farmer added it was the final value and nothing was purchased by the farmer because no information is given in the question 
further rupees 400 is what the value or oh sorry the cost of intermediate goods and services of a floor mill and rupees 600 is the cost occurred by the uh, bakery owner on the purchase of uh, the floor so and at the end rupees 800 is the cost what the shopkeeper had to occur behind the purchase of bread from the baker so simply this is the value of output 2700 and minus 400 600 that is 1000 1000 plus 800 that is 1800 if we uh, come to the final value then that would be rupees 900 only okay so this is how we can uh, come to the final value of uh, or final value added in the economy uh, by different producers through the evaluated method so either uh, we can uh, pick the value of uh, final output directly or we can uh, follow the formula of a value added method uh, now there are some questions given examples given here and uh, you are supposed to solve them so let you try all the numericals and uh, go through some uh, theoretical questions also based on the value added method if there is any problem then uh, definitely uh, we will be discussing them so right now stay easy with valuated method thank you